Thank you for joining us on this very perfect fall night here at the Albuquerque Museum in Old Town. My name is Shel Sanchez. I'm the Director of Arts and Culture for the City of Albuquerque. And uh, the Albuquerque Museum is one of the amazing things that is in the Department of Arts and Culture. And I like to remind people that belong to all of you if you are residents of Albuquerque. And if you're a tourist, it belongs to you while you're here. So thank you for joining us this evening. We're really excited. Um, and, but I'm not going to tell you what we're excited about. I'm just here to welcome. Um, you know, anything amazing that happens in our cultural public spaces are the result of a lot of people, a lot of ongoing support. So I just want to take a moment and recognize some VIPs that we have here with us tonight, some special guests. So first, I believe we have Honorary Consul of Spain, Fred Mondragon. Fred, where are you? Right here. Thank you, Fred, for joining us. and representing not only our city, but also representing Spain, which is perfect for tonight. And I don't know if um, Ambassador Ed Romero has gotten here yet this evening. If you know, everybody look around. He's arriving in the parking lot. He's arriving in the parking lot. Okay, we'll, we'll welcome him again in a minute. But we also have um, several members of our boards that oversee and support the Albuquerque Museum. So if you're here from the Museum Board of Trustees, I see at least one, two, three, give a wave. We've got these people who do a lot, keep us on track, help us make good decisions like this. Um, and then we also have several members of the Albuquerque Museum Foundation Board who help us bring the resources and the advocacy together to keep this place going and growing. So Albuquerque Museum Foundation Board members, I know there were a couple, Patricia Kurz, I saw her in the back, <laughs> Stephanie Del Campo, yeah, oh, we've got many, many today. So thank you guys so much for being here. Um, and then, let's see, did Ambassador Romero make it in? <laughs> he's, he's coming. So. I, we could give him a round of applause entering. He's been working on behalf of, Span of Hispanic culture and culture in our city for many decades. So if you can make a lot of noise as he enters, I think that would be great. <laughs> Super. Okay. Well, I am going to hand it off to the museum director here at the Albuquerque Museum. Andrew Connors, who's going to talk to you a little bit about this evening and all the things on um, that are like lie in front of us and this big crazy thing behind us. So, Andrew, come on up. Thank you very much, Shell, and it is a great honor to have so many important individuals in our midst. And I do want to second Shell's applause for Board of Trustees and the Albuquerque Museum uh, Board of Directors. They have been greatly supportive, as has the Albuquerque Museum Foundation through all of this process. So I want to thank all of them very much for attending. I also want to thank a few um, members of the City of Albuquerque staff that made something like this possible. Uh, first and foremost, I would like to thank the um, Assistant City Attorney Lee Brunner, who is the attorney for the Department of Arts and Culture, who worked very closely with uh, Spanish and United States and Albuquerque lawyers to make sure that this was transferred here safely. Um, also, Jeanette Chavez in risk management was incredibly helpful in all of this process, and she has been so enthusiastic about helping the Albuquerque Museum in so many different ways. Um, and I do want to remind you that this Oreo, uh, this object that is now joining the Albuquerque Museum's permanent collection is not the first opportunity that the Albuquerque Museum has had to celebrate the connections with Spain in a city that is named after a duke from Spain. In 1706, as you all know, um, the city of Albuquerque, or the Villa of Albuquerque, was named in honor of the Duke of Albuquerque. And then in the 1950s, the 18th Duke of Albuquerque, Don Beltran Osorio Diez de Rivera, uh, donated to the Albuquerque Museum one of our signature objects, the Repostero, which was created in the 1620s to celebrate the family lineage of the Dukes of Albuquerque. So this is continuing on a long celebration of the important connections 
between our city and the country of Spain. So we very much thank Lueve for making possible such an incredibly important donation of an object that many of you may not have seen before um, or may not have even understood what a structure like this is. An Oreo is specifically a grain storage structure that have been built uh, since the Middle Ages in Spain and Portugal. And it's raised up off the ground to keep the vermin out of the grain, to keep the rats and the mice out of the grain. And this, our structure, would have originally had uh, wooden walls with, slat, with slits between each one of the wooden boards to make sure that ventilation can flow in and out. In Galicia and in Portugal, uh, the northern part of Portugal, it's very humid and wet, and so they want to make sure that the grain stays dry. What I find fascinating about a structure like this is that most of them, starting in the 1600s, were built specifically to store one type of grain, corn on the cob. <laughs> corn on the cob, which was not eaten by humans in Spain, mostly eaten by animals, uh, but it was an important crop early on in the 1600s in Spain. Where did corn come from? from the Americas. So this object shows us that connection, not just culture coming from Europe to the Americas, but Native American culture helping to feed the world. So this object will help us tell that story of New Mexico, Spain, the New World in such an interesting way. So this is a major gift for us here at the Albuquerque Museum. And once again, I want to thank a number of individuals that had the vision to see this connection. Um, and first and foremost, I would like to acknowledge our museum leadership, uh, which includes Cindy Garcia, who you'll hear from later. Cindy is our museum's administrator. And Cindy got the initial call from a colleague at the Hispanic Society of America in New York City saying, hey, Cindy, we have been offered this incredible building, but we can't install it in our, at our museum in Manhattan. We just don't have space. Um, I know that the Albuquerque Museum loves this connection to Spain. Might you be interested in it? And Cindy had the vision to say, yes, we possibly can. Uh, it's going to be a lot of work, but let's figure out a way to be able to tell this story. So Cindy Garcia um, made so much of that possible. Um, and our assistant director here at the museum, Claudia Gallardo de Campbell, who is here this evening. Claudia is somewhere. Raise your hand. Thank you, Claudia. Um, and then our head curator, Josie M. Lopez, um, also saw the potential for an object like this and added it to the collection. Um, I think Andrew uh, said a lot about what this exhibit is about and, and why it's so special for Albuquerque and, uh, and the great historical, if you will, significance of Spain to New Mexico and to our city. Um, I got to tell you a quick little story about this, however. Um, you know, the Duke and the Duke statue that is uh, here by the plaza um, is one of those uh, statues that uh, when I was a child and I would come to Albuquerque and, uh, and family would see it, I always wondered what was the significance of someone on a horse. And it wasn't until I started, you know, obviously uh, going to college here and growing up here that I recognized, you know, I always wasn't sure why we called them the Albuquerque Dukes. I never really realized why we were called the Duke City, mostly because I grew up in northern New Mexico, but it's pretty clear that we're all related in some ways to, uh, to Spain and, uh, and the relationship and historical relationships that we have with Spain. This is an amazing exhibit. Um, I'm not so sure I would have had the imagination or the uh, sense of what this really meant for uh, the agricultural community in Spain or how it impacted uh, what Andrew described as the relationship with uh, corn on the cob with, with this new world of ours. But nonetheless, it's something that we have and that we can celebrate and that we can appreciate. And particularly as we look at the historic significance of this, this is a piece that was dates back to the 1740s. So um, it's, it's a long time ago. But it's really cool to have it here and it's really amazing. I want to obviously express my sincere thanks again to Andrew and the Department of Arts and Culture, to Shell and to the staff of, of the museum for bringing this together and to Mark Heller for his contribution to bringing this to, to Albuquerque and, and the relationship that we have uh, with Loveo and, and the partnership because it really is an opportunity for all of us to, 
to continue our education and enjoy our relationships with Spain and, um, and obviously have a, an opportunity to have a great evening. I also would like to say that obviously the mayor is unavailable today, he's out of town, but uh, on behalf of him and his wife and his family, uh, thank you again all for being here. Thank you. Thank you and uh, welcome to the opening of the, uh, of the Oreo here at the, uh, at the Albuquerque Museum. Uh, we'd like to acknowledge uh, the city of Albuquerque, Albuquerque Museum, the Albuquerque Muse uh, Museum History Advisory Committee, and the Albuquerque Museum Foundation. <clears throat> A little bit about Lueve. Uh, Lueve was founded in Madrid in 1846 by a collective of, uh, of leather makers. Lueve is, old, is Spain's leading luxury brand and one of the oldest houses in the world. For over 175 years, Loewe has been defined by a unique savoir-faire drawing on its Spanish uh, heritage to inform a bold, spirited approach to craft and culture. A deep connection to art and design is really at the heart of the identity of Loewe today. It's now encapsulated by the work of the Loewe Foundation. Established in 1988, this proud mission of promoting and supporting the arts, from poetry and dance to fine art and craft, alongside a rich program of collaborations and projects with both emerging and established artisan makers, Loewe remains committed to the dialogue between art, craft, and design. This is embodied by an incredible collection of artworks spanning painting, sculpture, installation, and photography, all on display in our stores around the world. One of those stores was the Loewe Miami Design District store. And this is where we housed our 18th century granary structure. It was really built, the store was built around an open air, light filled environment with this monument to our heritage in the middle. Creative director Jonathan Anderson, together with our architecture division, designed the store's light filled open planned interior uh, as pretty much a striking tension between the structure's rough hewn age character and the dazzling services of the design district in Miami. And now Loewe is incredibly proud to donate the Aurea to the Albuquerque Museum to be housed here permanently for visitors to discover and enjoy. Awesome. And then although this Loewe Oreo is a ruin, many have been preserved and can still be found across Galicia and Asturias today. Now transplanted across the Atlantic, this rare opportunity to see a fascinating example of 300-year-old Iberian vernacular architecture is here for us all. So thank you so much. We'd like to thank specifically Mencia Figueroa from, Hispanic, from the Hispanic Society for having the vision. Uh, Alberto Molo from Lueve for all his hard work on the Lueve side of things for making this happen. Cindy Garcia from the, muse the museum's administrator for agreeing with Mencia's vision and for making it happen with the city of Albuquerque. Andrew Connors, director of the museum for supporting the vision every step of the way. Andrew Rogers, CEO of the Albuquerque uh, Museum Foundation for acting as the fiscal agent. And Alejandro Lopez, and the crew for transport and installation from the Concierge Services of Luxury Living in Miami. Thank you very much and enjoy. Okay, so one more, um, and I think everybody, we've, we've talked about Cindy several times. So Cindy Garcia is the museum's administrator, and again, you know, these kinds of crazy, visionary, large, heavy projects take a lot of people and a lot of logistics, and Cindy was behind this um, very big idea all the way. So let's give her a round of applause as she comes up. What a wonderful evening. I, I want to thank uh, Matthew for being here tonight and making it here. And I also would like to, to thank uh, Lawrence for making it a beautiful evening. <laughs> um, I, I hope you like this acquisition as much as I do. I think it, uh, it just brings life to the sculpture garden, um, a new life anyway, uh, even though it's, it's really old, it's, it's new to us. Um, also, I think without further ado, I'd like to start inviting people up here. But before I forget, I just saw her back there. I want to thank uh, Elaine Richardson, because she's the one that put this together. 
she has the nice ribbon. She, she put a lot of work into this, and this was an extra thing that she had to do on uh, other duties as assigned. So thank you very much, Elaine. OK, well, I'm going to start inviting people up here. Dos, uno, yeah. All right.